quando é, eu fui convidada para ser curadora da área de música, é, foi um dos primeiros nomes que eu pensei. E, além do SoundCloud, ele também está à frente do Music Hack Day, que está acontecendo aqui no evento, que é uma maratona de, de hack que dura 24 horas. E, e agora é com ele, e eu espero que vocês gostem. David. Ok, hello. Welcome. So, yeah, I mean, first of all, I'm just so excited to be here at Campus Party. One of my colleagues went to the one in Mexico, and, and she just said it blew her mind to see so many people in the crowd all busy creating and engaging with each other and, and kind of really getting together in, in an offline scenario. And for us as well, I mean, for me personally, this is my first time in Brazil. Um, Brazil's actually, we've seen it, like, visits to SoundCloud from Brazil is just growing massively. It just seems you guys are doing a lot of exciting stuff here. So... Um, yeah, really interested afterwards to get out and meet you all and kind of speak to you and get your feedback about, um, you know, how, how is Brazil and, you know, what, what do you know about SoundCloud already? Um, but today I was kind of, I was asked to do a 60-minute speech. Um, and I was really, really trying to kind of rack my brains of, of you know, what to talk about. Um, and I was trying to think, well, I mean, first of all, actually, I should, I should ask, you know, who in the crowd has actually heard of SoundCloud already? Just raise your hand if you know SoundCloud. So there's a few people here who don't. Um, I'll just give you a very, very kind of brief overview. So SoundCloud is um, the premier um, sound sharing platform on the web. So we allow anyone to record and capture their sounds and then upload them to the web. And as we go through, I'll show you lots of examples of that that kind of color the story as we go along. Um, and it's quite exciting because we're actually um, a community of 11 million creators now. Um, last month, we hit the 10 million milestone, which was really exciting for us. And we're just growing like crazy. Uh, we just added a million users in the last month. So as somebody who's been at SoundCloud since near the beginning, when I was doing this speech, I was trying to think, well, what can I actually talk about that will actually, you know, what unique experiences that I have that I can share with you on the stage? And, and one of my colleagues came, came to me and he said, you know, we're, we're really growing as a company. And what we'd done last Christmas, we actually, well, this Christmas just gone. Uh, the company's gone from eight people when I joined to 80 people, and we're hiring someone new every week. And we got so large, we, you know, trying to cater to these 11 million users that we, we tried to make these. We, they were playing cards. So every single employee in the company has one of these playing cards. And it's quite difficult when you're growing as a company, when you're growing a product and when you're scaling something on the web really fast, it's quite difficult to transfer all of that knowledge from one employee to the next. So... One of my uh, new colleagues came to me and said, well, you know, Dave, you know, you've been here since the beginning. You probably have a good feel for lots of the different people in the company and what they do. You know, what, what was it that, that we've done in the last four years that have got us to where we are? And, you know, what are those things that we can make sure we do going forward? You know, I, I think if you had 10 companies, you know, nine might take a certain approach and then one will take another approach. And it will, it's that kind of secret source, the magic that really kind of helped the company. So it's actually quite a hard process. You know, you, you get so mixed up in all the day-to-day -day things that you do. Sometimes you forget to step back and have a look at those um, essential things for success. So I, that's what I'm going to talk about today. What, what were really the kind of key pillars of our, our success? And actually, hopefully, in describing some of those in our context, hopefully, if any of you, are, if you, if you guys are building web platforms or, or products uh, nowadays, you can actually learn some, something from that. So here are the four key ingredients. Obviously, I'm not going to give all the secret sauce away, but just talk, talk loosely through some of them. Um, first of all, uh, the, the most important thing, the fundamental thing to SoundCloud is our content. Um, you know, and all great web platforms, you know, they really focus hard on one particular thing. If you look at the web over the last few years, we've seen all the rise of all these amazing platforms that are focusing on specific types of content. So you have Twitter for short messages, uh, WordPress for blog posts, Flickr for... Uh, photos and Instagram for photos, YouTube, Vimeo for video. And when, when we came to designing the product, product, it was like, you know, what problem can we solve? What's actually, what's the missing layer? What, what are people not really having a great experience with on the web? And when we were looking at that, we, we decided that there was probably one really key ingredient of personal expression that wasn't really being tapped into. So, you know, when we think about social media, Everybody's used to sharing photos or posting videos or communicating with each other in all these different media formats. And the one thing that was really missing, in our opinion, was sound. So I just want to play you a short, a short video of what we think about sound at SoundCloud. If 
I can get to the right slide. Apologies. Me. This can be sound. This can be sound. Sound can be terrifying. It can be beautiful. Sound is kind of like a color that you could hear. For me, in my head, it's like when I hear sounds, I hear things like knocking into each other. All the vibrations that come at us from all different directions for any purpose at all. We're vibrating. You and I, we're a chord. You feel vibrations as a kind of sense of touching from a distance. It's a way that we can sort of stay in like physical contact with each other. And it's a really big way that we relate to the world. Okay. Within a social context, that's what I think people are reacting to. Not necessarily to the meanings of the words, but the coloring of your sounds. All the kind of rich information you get about our environment, that sound. We all live in a, a kind of super saturated audio environment. Our brains are constantly filtering out um, stuff that we don't need to hear. I built up a filter against this uh, generator that's down the street. I can hear that bus saw going over there. I can hear the sound of planes in the sky. Hello! Okay, the guy who's going around the corner here now, his brakes work perfectly well. Can you hear it? Crank it up. Let's take a listen. Listening to all this random disparate noise and sound that's going on around us right now. When you actually tune it in and you listen to it, you, you hear pitches that are like singing together, you hear harmonies, you hear weird textures. It's about paying attention to the individual components more than the overall effect. The more differences you perceive, the richer your life is. I do remember mowing the lawn and almost falling into a trance because of their All this supposed noise is a rich stew of information about how we live and who we are as a culture. Whether it's the train rolling down the track, inside the sound. There's somebody slinky going down the staircase. There are harmonics, there's richness. I call it the hidden choir. All this detail. That rhythm is like <laughs> Most sounds around us, if you unlock them, there's richness inside them. There's music in every sound. So when we, were, when we were thinking about sound, I think when we originally set out four years ago, the, 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 the first and foremost thing that we had in mind was music. We were solving a problem, how could two musicians send files to each other? And as we grow, we, we suddenly realize that actually, sound, there's a lot more to sound than meets the eye. There's some really special qualities about sound that set it completely apart from uh, other different media types. First of all, if you think about sound and how it has such a deep impact on our emotions, um, I think there's a lot of gamers uh, in the room here, and I remember uh, as, a, as a college kid, I, would be, I had a friend who would be deeply immersed in playing his games, and all you could sit, uh, hear from his room would be downstairs. You could just hear him fighting, you know, all these kind of creepy monsters coming out at him. And what he used to do, whenever he used to get too scared playing the, compu uh, the computer game and wanted to get through the level, he would actually turn the sound off. And that's because as you're playing a computer game, as soon as you hit, it's the sound that really brings attention. Another example that you'll probably all be familiar with is uh, think about a horror movie. Now, I dare you to go back and, you know, your kind of worst horror movie, the one that you fear the most, go back to that scene. As soon as you turn the sound off on that horror movie, all of a sudden it suddenly becomes funny. It was the sound that really brought the tension, and that way, that's why sound is so expressive. Also, for a lot of people in the room, you know, anyone doing computer science, you'll you'll really kind of get this notion of parallelizing. You know, when, when we think about processing things, if you can stack that process and, and parallelize them, uh, you can all of a sudden bring one task shorter. So you, you can do a lot of things as multitasking. I think that's another unique thing about sound. If you think about media consumption uh, anywhere on the web or anywhere else, if you think about something like video, if you're watching video, you're going to have uh, trouble doing other things. Um, you know, try watching a video in your car. I'm sure a lot of people probably have watched videos in their car, but it, 
probably wasn't a particularly good thing to do. The same as reading blog posts. If you're reading a blog post, we well, can't really do anything else. You're completely focused on that one thing. But sound has this, not a unique quality, but this special quality to it that as soon as you move something to sound, then I can start doing other things like you know, listening to music while I'm working or you know, listening to comedy while I'm coding or listening to a podcast while I'm driving my car. I think that's one interesting, if you think about video versus sound, People think about media on the web, they immediately think about video, but we actually think audio can be bigger than video on the web. Another great quality of you know, audio versus video is um, this sense that it's quite un unintrusive. Um, one of our community evangelists, he saw someone posting on Twitter, one of his friends, saying that he, he had just witnessed his, um, his, his nine-year-old kid teaching his five-year-old kid his times table. So, you know, really getting in there and involved and teaching each other different things. And he really wanted to capture that moment. And our community evangelist, uh, David Knoll, said, tweeted him back and said, well, why don't you actually record that? And it was this kind of light bulb going off that you know, if he'd gone over to this special moment and he'd you know, stuck a video camera in his kids' faces, they probably would have reacted completely different. By, but by capturing the sound of it, it was unintrusive and somehow captured that moment in a much more special way. And you know, last of all, sound is simple. Um, you know, one of the beautiful things that another platform like Twitter did, it, you know, it made communicating simple. It, it took that communication, shortened it down into 140 characters. But when, when we designed SoundCloud and we brought out our new apps, we actually built a record button in. So if you think about it, you can tap record, that's one button, and you can express yourself and share that. You know, if you're going to type a Twitter message, you have to type 140 characters. So you know, in a way, it's 140 times simpler to actually record a sound and communicate um, than it is actually to type on something like Twitter. So a lot of the things that we've been talking about here is you know, thinking about sound in a very kind of ethereal way. It's, it's quite you know, contextual. You know, it's, it's hard to really um, get your, kind of, you know, your, your grip on sound. Something like video or text is much more tangible. So I think one of the things that we did almost by accident when we started SoundCloud, um, the two founders, one was a sound engineer and one was an artist. So what they decided to do was they wanted to be able to send comments back and forth with that sound. So what they did, they visualized the sound, they put it into our kind of trademark, um, a trademark waveform. And by doing that, they allowed each other to give feedback. But almost unintentionally, what we did is we made that sound into a social object. So all of a sudden, this piece of sound was something that people could engage around. They could like it, they could comment it, they could share it. And I think you know, if anyone's building a platform, really thinking about the thing that you're focusing, how can you turn that one thing, whether it's abstract or boring or you know, uh, functional, think about how you can turn that one object, that specific piece of content on your platform, into a social object that people can go and spread and use in many different ways. And you know, by having this kind of notion of sound is just a waveform on a page with a unique URL on the web, um, you know, we, we also really encourage lots of different types of sound. So obviously, our first thought was, OK, well, we need to solve a problem in music. And you know, I, for those of you who know SoundCloud, you probably don't need me to say we have a lot of different artists from the 50 Cents and Lady Gaga's and uh, Madonna's of this world. Um, but it's also this just anybody who has, uh, you know, needs to share um, uh, share, their sa uh, share their music, they can do it using SoundCloud. So, but what was unique, because we had this um, you know, broad structure, anybody could put any sound on, we, we all of a sudden s started seeing lots of other use cases that somehow we probably weren't expecting at the beginning. Um, so this is a great example. I'm just going to jump on and show you some of this. So sample and effects, so the building blocks of sound. We have a lot of different artists who will share um, you know, their stems or their, the different sounds that have made up their music and let other people remix it. So I'm just going to have to jump into my browser. Ooh, there we go. So this is an example. This is a, a UK artist called Labyrinth. And so he's put all of his different sounds up there. So the community on SoundCloud can actually go and remix and rebuild those sounds and turn them into completely new tracks. OK, so try and work out how I get back to my presentation. Oh. Mm. OK, so that's sample and effects. Something else is just general sounds. Um, one of the things that I do when I travel 
um, because I had the SoundCloud app in my pocket, I capture all the different sounds of the places that I'm traveling to. I was in Mumbai in India um, in November, and it was really fun. It was the first time I'd ever been on a rickshaw. And if anyone's been to India, and it's the same in lots of different cities, probably here as well, you know, there's just crazy city sounds around you. And I, I captured the sound of this rickshaw ride. And one thing that was really exciting for me, I posted that publicly on my SoundCloud. And OK, so it was a very you know, personal memory to me. But somebody else who was following me on SoundCloud actually took that, uh, took that sound. And again, they used it as a sample and they actually made a track which included my sounds and send it to me and said, you know, is it okay? I noticed you'd license this under Creative Commons. Can I build a track from it? And I was like, sure. And so for me, that was a really, really rich experience. Messages is another thing. Um, if you follow our CEO, Alex, on SoundCloud, again, he's traveling a lot. He's sending lots of different messages and updates from wherever he is in the world. And it's really fun to hear just those personal moments um, as he's going about his business. Storytelling. I mean, this is kind of storytelling is the nuts and bolts of all good journalism and radio. Um, storytelling is that, you know, that stories prove that sound can really uh, transform a message to people. And we're seeing a lot of that happening on SoundCloud. Uh, politics is a great one. You know, politicians, they have to get their message across and they need to do that in whatever ways they can. Again, I'll just try and get to my browser here. Aha, uh -huh. getting the hang of this. Um, so this was, I don't know if anyone remembers a while ago, there was, um, uh, in the US, there was someone called Gabrielle Gifford, who was a, a Democratic representative, and she was actually shot at a rally with uh, five other people. Um, and one of the parts, when she was shot, she actually survived, but the part of the brain that the bullet damaged was um, her ability to speech. And obviously, she wanted to get back out there and make a stand and say, you know, I'm on my road to recovery. So she did that by um, using sound, and this is the recording. This is Gabby Gibbons. I miss you. I miss Tucson. The mountains. Blue sky. In the heat. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting better. It's been a hard year for all of us. Thinking about that day makes me sad. Six people died. So you can see when you hear this back, this is a really powerful piece of audio. I've actually highlighted one of the time comments. This is somebody who picked up this sound on SoundCloud and was really inspired by it. And they went to a brain trauma group and actually played back the audio. And it was a really big inspiration um, to all those people who have been affected with the same problem. Representing Arizona is my honor. My okay, so that's politics. Uh, news and commentary, obviously. You know, we're, we're seeing a lot of people like The New Yorker using SoundCloud to deliver news updates. Uh, things like interviews. This is, uh, you know, professionally done interviews, but also, again, you know, quite often when I come to conferences like this, I just get my um, uh, SoundCloud app out and I do lots of mini interviews with people as I go along, and it's really interesting um, to get their take on events. Speeches, again, this could be political speeches. It could be, you know, Mayor Bloomberg doing his uh, mayoral address in New York. Um, but it can also be personal moments. One thing that I've been doing, a lot of my family members recently have been married, um, and actually recording um, those speeches at the marriage is a really kind of unique part of the process, the bit where they actually give their vows to each other. And to be able to capture that in sound and play them back is such a, tr a treasured memory. And this is just a, a little personal example. Um, that little boy there that you could see on the slide was my three-year-old son. Um, and, and suddenly I noticed I've got so many videos of my son. I've got so many photos of my son. But when he was learning his first words, I started to record them. So for example, I have his first song uh, captured in sound. And this is him, the, the first time he actually managed to count to 10 in full. So this is a really personal moment for me. You'll actually hear he makes a bit of a mistake. He says six at one point where he's not supposed to. But this is a, a really kind of personal memory for me. Oh, if I... Uh... So yeah, so whenever I'm away from home, I can always play that sound back and it's a really, really treasured moment.
And then meetings, this is something that we've got into the habit of at SoundCloud. You know, everybody hates meetings. You know, meetings should be as short as possible. Sometimes there's ones that you just can't make and there's so many happening. So actually recording meetings so that you've got the memory of what was said, or if you're not there, you can actually hear it back. Uh, the only one, one caveat with that I would mention is that if you're recording a meeting on SoundCloud, just make sure it's private because uh, I have seen a few people accidentally publicly put things up. Uh, comedy, again, you know, the one thing that we associate with great comedians is their voice. Um, on Twitter, I follow a lot of comedians, um, and whenever I like, read back their tweet, I can always hear it playing back um, in their actual voice that they deliver on stage. Uh, nature is another great one. Um, <laughs> everyone capturing everything from penguin noises. Um, you know, a colleague of mine likes to play the, the sounds of bats having sex uh, whenever they do this presentation. Um, but th we, we do a series on SoundCloud called Found Sounds, and it's one of my favorite community series where we find people recording all sorts of different things in nature. And would you believe it, there's, there's hundreds of recordings on SoundCloud of ice. What is the sound of ice? Well, if you go onto SoundCloud, you can actually hear it, and it's, it's actually more compelling than you might think it is. So I'll, I'll skip through the rest of these. Literature, audio books, obviously. Education is where you know, sound can really help with education. Poetry, this is um, Ashton Kutcher, who's actually an investor in SoundCloud. And when he first started using SoundCloud, he was actually um, putting up poetry that he'd done and sharing those with his followers on, uh, on, um, on Twitter. And this is, uh, this is a nice local example that I wanted to show you. Um, so like, if, if you're a fan, you've got a pop star, or you know, you're a celebrity, a lot of those people are just broadcasting on places like Twitter and Facebook. Quite often you'll read it and it just looks like they've got someone in their marketing team um, to write an update like, hey, I'm going to be in Brazil on tour, you know, buy the tickets here. Um, and you know, we're seeing a lot of people saying, well, hang on, if I actually deliver that same message with voice, then they can, it shows that it's authentic and it creates a, a deeper reaction. So I'll play this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of Rihanna myself, but it's really great to see her using uh, sound in that type of way. Okay, and then so, I mean, I think the one thing, you know, when, whenever you're building something, you're thinking about your unique content, obviously, is that ours is sound, and we've seen so many different use cases. We now have 3.3 million tags on SoundCloud to describe the sound, but when you're doing what you're doing and you're thinking about your content, I think if you've been doing something and you're not getting surprised every single week, then maybe you actually need to rethink what you're doing. By lifting the kind of the boundaries of what that content can be and letting the users find their own use for it, um, then you're much more likely to, uh, to grow and you're not going to narrow your use cases. It would have been very tempting for us at the beginning just to concentrate on the real high end of musicians who are using SoundCloud. But kind of lifting off those, you know, those constraints, that really allowed us to grow. OK, so that's enough about sound. We've, we've all heard about sound now. The second key pillar, and this, this is really applicable to um, you know, most companies that are starting out today, is to really think about your community. A community is something that we take extremely seriously at SoundCloud, and it was one of the first jobs that we created um, you know, once we'd actually built a product team and once we had the engineering team, with somebody to look after our fast-growing community. I think sometimes community can be misunderstood. You know, it's not just you know, the highly visible users on your service. It's not just, you know, in our case, it's lots of you know, bigger artists like the Leonard Cohens and 50 Cents, etc. It's really not about those. You know, quite often, they can be part of the community, but often they're just there acting as kind of lighthouse users. And obviously, community isn't just customer support. Sometimes I've seen other companies use community as a kind of a nicer term for somebody who just sits behind and answers customer support emails. And obviously, doing good customer support is something extremely important. And if you're not doing that right, you, you really need to fix that. Um, but you know, it really goes, community goes beyond the level of just that. Or another thing that I've seen is people describing their community team as you know, the people who do the Facebook or Twitter updates. There's so much more to community than customer support and social media. So yeah, community building, that's what it's all about. 
and we see a lot of people when they first start using SoundCloud, and it might even take them weeks or months or you know, in some cases even years, but they start using SoundCloud because the platform solves a problem for them. And at a certain point, there's a kind of a light bulb that goes off. There's a, a sudden spark of inspiration. It might be you know, somebody's commented on one of their tracks or somebody shared it and they picked up an extra thousand plays. Um, you know, someone's favorited it and you know, really given them some great feedback. And at that moment, they suddenly realize that, oh, SoundCloud isn't just a tool for broadcasting. You know, there is a community here that I can really uh, dive into. And I think when you can look at your product and see what those triggers are, and if you can build tools that allow people to build that community themselves, you can't force that. You just have to provide them with great tools and let the community build itself. And once you have that level of um, like community engagement, then one thing that you can do to really fan the flames of that is take some time, take some time out. You know, stop thinking about all the support requests, stop thinking about all the kind of biz dev that you're doing, and say, well, hang on, you know, who are the users on my platform that are using us the most that might go on to tell other people about it? And that's one thing that we did at SoundCloud. Um, you know, we started a thing about a year ago called SoundCloud of the Day, where we would we weren't just focusing on telling our audience about the big stars again. It was looking at those people who were use it, really using the product in an engaging way, and the people who were like the, the kind of spark of that community. And we wanted to celebrate them. We wanted to say, hey, thanks. You're doing a really great job in growing the user base of SoundCloud, so let's do something special for you. What we did, we simply just sent them an email. We would pick them out, we would write a little blog post, and we would send them an email just saying, thank you. You know, what you're doing is great. We want you to be SoundClouder of the day. Um, and we weren't sure how that was going to go down, but what we found was the reaction was superb. And again, maybe it surprised us, but what we, what we saw was that some of those users were actually sending messages back to us. They would send private sound messages back saying, hey, this was really awesome. And I just wanted to play this one clip to, to really um, substantiate that. I received an email today saying I was SoundClouder of the day. Thank you, SoundCloud. You've been so good to me. Thank you, thank you, SoundCloud. C-L-O-U-D, SoundCloud is officially awesome. Uh, it's really just enlivened my passion for music. Overjoyed. I love SoundCloud and I love being able to share my music and get feedback from fans all around the world. Completely transformed the way that I create my music. It's really, you know, completed a dream of mine. It's the best community in the world. Thank you so much, guys. You rock. Thank you, thank you, SoundCloud. You're absolutely coolest side on the internet. So yeah, so, I mean, for us, you know, that is just a bit of fun, but it really underlines the point, you know, if there's people in your community that are that kind of supportive and that of appreciative of what you're doing, then what are they going to do? They're going to go and tell other people about your product. They're going to draw them into the community as well. So really go out and find your most engaged users and, and don't just let them do what they're doing. Really celebrate them. And then empower your evangelists. You know, there's always going to be one out of a thousand people who just like going and spreading the word. And again, it's it's about building tools so that you can empower those evangelists to go and um, you know attract other users. This is something that we just started last week um, called SoundCloud uh, Local Heroes, where we'll actually go find you know areas where you know we'd really like to see a community being built and find the most active users and just empower them with tools to go and do interesting things within those communities. And real-world connections. I mean, this is something I think everybody at Campus Party really knows about. You know, a lot of people connect with each other nowadays online. But to get people, you know, for example, all the people in this room from different disciplines and you know different areas of, um, of Brazil, get them all together, and that real kind of world connection somehow supports the, o the, the online connection that they had. So this is something that we did um, SoundCloud meetups, and you know, there's a lot of other great companies doing these. Tumblr was a really uh, great inspiration for us of doing meetups where their users would get together. And what we've seen, you know, we have some cities where you know 100, 200 people get together. We have lots of smaller towns. And what one really exciting um, example was um, there was eight people who got together in somebody's living room. They'd never met before. They all brought, brought down a separate instrument and they made a track. They came to this meetup and they used all their different skills and they actually made a track, which for us was just um, you know, real validation of how important those real world connections are. And of course, yeah, we, <laughs> it was quite funny. It's almost a bit embarrassing, but it wasn't just real world. We also had some meetups happening in uh, Second Life, which was quite amusing. Um, but remember, you know, when thinking about community, it's very easy to stand on a stage and talk about you know, building a community. And I think some people might misinterpret that. It's not about you know, managing your community. That isn't what you should be focusing on. You should be focusing on like, providing the tools to your community to go and build the community themselves. 
So another community that's really important to us, developers. Uh, SoundCloud, you know, has always been a product-focused company. We've always, um, you know, had a lot more developers than we have business people, which I think is really important when you're building a web product. Um, and communities have really added something, and they've, they've given us this base to grow. And I just wanted to give you a few examples of that and highlight how we've done it at SoundCloud. Um, so it, everything we do is backed up by our platform approach. So, you know, on the top, on the surface, of course, we have, you know, our own site, soundcloud.com, and we have the different apps. But underpinning everything that we do is the platform. So by that, I mean, you know, giving people access to our API and building all sorts of different use cases on top of what we do. So, yeah, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so it's the case with most APIs, they let you read and write. So it's not just people extracting data from your service, um, it's also people um, inputting. So um, at SoundCloud, we just have this really rich kind of developer community building that, you know, when we're trying to build a product, a product for 10 million people or 100 million people, we can't cater to every single person's specific um, you know, uh, requirements. If you think a good analogy is Twitter, you know, they have certain power users who need certain features, so they built this ecosystem around their platform that allowed people to build things like TweetDeck, which was really for power users. And it's the same at SoundCloud, where we have so many different use cases to cater for. By opening up that platform and keeping what we do at the center really simple, then we can cater to all those and continue to build the service. And it really adds a lot of functionality. This is. Um, this is our app gallery. We actually have, I think it's um, over 200 commercial, well, commercial kind of, you know, real world apps that have been put into our gallery, which is a showcase for all the different things that our developers are doing. And as a SoundCloud user, you can dive into those and find all sorts of different things that help you do what you need to do with your sounds. And we, we kind of split it out into three separate categories. So first of all is create and record. And we have you know, all these kind of specialized services that help people actually you know, input or get their sounds into SoundCloud. This is one more high level example. We would never you know, really go out of our way to cater to the high end audio market, but by partnering with a company like Pro Tools, they actually integrated with SoundCloud so that you can be sharing, you can be uh, creating your music in Pro Tools, and then with just one click, share that to SoundCloud. And that's a really great example of just a partner being able to spread um, the amount of users that we have. Uh, another one, so listen and discover. So this is all about, you know, on SoundCloud, we haven't really done that much in terms of focusing on discovering or, you know, recommending. Um, but by having this platform approach, we've allowed other people to conceive about how they would like to listen and discover um, to their sounds on SoundCloud. This is an example that I wanted to show you of uh, Moby. And what he wanted to do was he wanted to, um, you know, create a really exciting way for people to experience his new album. You know, it was on SoundCloud. Oh, uh, hey, let me find this. Yeah, he just wanted to find a really special way for people to actually listen to his album. So what they built was a mashup between. It was a mashup between Polymap's Instagram and SoundCloud. And what he did, you can see the, the white dots on the screen. The white dots are on the screen are uh, photos that he took while he was making the album. So here I can see a photo that he took at a gig in Colombia. But what he did was then he used kind of, you know, he really wanted to crowdsource the project. And he asked people to simply upload their own Instagram photos and add a hashtag of the album name, and they would all be congregated onto this map. So by using SoundCloud and lots of different APIs, he was able to create this extremely unique listening experience. Okay, so. And then distributing and sharing. So we've really focused you know, if you're building a platform, you don't want people just to be, um, you know, using your content on the site. We really wanted sound to be a pervasive part of the web. And any place where people uh, needed to distribute their sounds to, what we wanted to be connected to. So this is a great example, um, a non-music example. It's called Storify. Um, Storify is a really powerful platform for citizen journalism and journalists and reporters to collect different social media and then report back the news. This is a great example where we had um, a reporter called Dan Patterson from ABC News. And what he was doing, he was reporting on the Occupy Wall Street um, events that happened last year. So he would record lots of interviews and, um, and takes from those protests, and he was able to use Storify to combine that with lots of different media to tell a story. 
And of course, it's not just uh, other develop developers using our API. We actually, you know, I don't know whether this uh, phrase translates into Brazilian, but we like to eat our own dog food. So we have our developers, you know, the API is a core part of what they do. In fact, our new mobile website that we built was built from the ground up using our API. But we also, um, you know, wanted to showcase what could be done, and we built this thing called SoundCloud Labs. And just some things that we, uh, that we built, um, Story Will. Again, this was an Instagram and SoundCloud mashup where you could go onto this site, you could connect with your Instagram account, pull all of those photos, and then record some audio that um, synced up to those photos. So it's a really great way of just creating a special story, a, a story around a trip or a special moment or something that you've done using photos and sound. Uh, this is another one we, we demoed this yesterday um, on the, the music stage. This is, um, you know, using the API to solve problems with, uh, for people. Imogen Heap, she was interacting with her um, and engaging with her fans by doing Q and A's, so question and answers. Um, but she was doing it by typing. And so every time a fan asked a question, she would have to spend ages typing out the answer. But we built something so that she could actually use the power of sound, so somebody could record the question to her, and then she could just use the SoundCloud app, record her answer, and then we put them together for everyone to hear. Um, yeah, last example, this is something that we built for South by Southwest. So when you capture a sound, you can add lots of really interesting context to it. One of those pieces of context is uh, geolocation. So as soon as you can tag a sound with its location, you can do all sorts of really interesting things like plotting those sounds uh, on maps. And we've seen all sorts of really interesting um, uh, map projects being built with uh, Google Maps and SoundCloud. And one of the things that we've done here um, uh, at Campus Party was um, have a music hack day. This was something to really nurture that developer community and so celebrate what they were doing and how they were using all this, th these different APIs. So I just wanted to show you a couple of examples of things that people have built um, at these events using our API. So this is InstaSound, so a, a kind of right, so Instagram for sound. Uh, this is an app we made as a hack for the Music Hack Day Cam. Um, InstaSound lets you record your sounds on your iPhone and also lets you apply a range of effects to them, including the one you're hearing right now, which should sound somewhat like a church. Uh, Classic old school phone sound, uh, speech enhancer, and a couple other effects. And of course, this lets you record it um, using those effects, and you can change the recording uh, effects midstream. And then finally, you get to uh, upload your sound. So yes, that's InstaSound, you know, like Instagram did with photos, adding filters and making it really easy and fun to upload photos and share them. That's a, a similar concept there. Uh, this is one I, I hope this loads. I'm going to try and show you this one. This was a, a SoundCloud comments visualizer. Okay, bear with me. This might take a few seconds to load. So you can enter any SoundCloud URL. And what it will do, it will go and retrieve that track, and it will go and find all the comments that have been left on that track, and then build this really beautiful visualization to give you a new way of experiencing that piece of music. Can everyone hear that? It's more important that you can see the, the, the comments. So this is actually, I'm a, a, a fairly bad amateur piano player, so this is my, me playing piano. But for me, it was really exciting just to have so many people comment and give me support and say, hey, you know, this was actually quite good. And to see it in this format really brings the, those time comments alive. OK. So, so in total, we've had uh, 10,000 apps built on the SoundCloud uh, platform so far, which is a really exciting number. I think if you really concentrate on that mindset, 
you know, those, those developers and all these applications built can really magnify the platform. And again, you know, if we're looking at going from you know, 1 million to 10 million to 100 million users, having these people creating these experiences around what we're doing um, is going to make it much more easy to get there. And it's kind of, uh, I think about this as kind of a, a sort of biz dev 2.0. It used to be that if you were building a web product or something, you would have to go out and do all these partnerships. You'd, you would send your biz dev guy out in a suit and he, you know, exchange business cards and do all these negotiations. Well, now by just creating these open flat platforms, it's actually a lot of the business is getting done, you know, at events like this where developers would get together and just play and, you know, make ideas. And a lot of them aren't going to stick but it saves a whole lot of time around negotiating and doing different things. You can actually go and build the product and let the product speak, to it, speak for itself rather than spending a lot of time on this kind of you know, lengthy discussion process of discussing ideas, you know, finding the commercials around it. So yeah, coming to the last uh, point, so mobile. Um, I think especially for anyone starting out now, I mean, this is even more crucial than it was for us before. A lot of companies now are thinking, someone like Instagram, for example, they're thinking mobile first. And mobile is becoming much more important. That's something that we're now really focusing on at SoundCloud as well. And if you think about it, I mean, it's, it's very obvious, and I'm sure everyone in the audience knows this, but I mean, our mobiles, everyone's got a mobile nowadays. You know, it's like walking around with a computer in our pocket. And it, you know, mobiles for a long time have been um, you know, the, the biggest form of communication for us. They're also now becoming the biggest form of consumption. Uh, you know, it, when I go out and speak to artists and they're saying, you know, we're seeing so much more traffic coming from mobiles um, to our websites than we are actually on the web. And I think in a lot of different territories, that, that's even more the case. But one thing that we've realized as well is that it's not just um, communication and consumption. There's also a really big emphasis on your mobile becoming a creation device as well. So we've taken some steps towards that recently, you know, making sure that um, what we've already built on the web is uh, compatible. The mobile web is you know, really on the rise. So optimizing, building HTML5 players. This was a project, an internal project that took us a long time, but we really, really wanted to get that experience right. If somebody goes to a web page and the media doesn't play because it's you know, either slow loading or it's you know, in flash, then they're just not going um, to consume that piece of media. This was the mobile website that I mentioned before, completely built on our API. Um, really thinking about if people are experiencing your site on a handset, well, the experience is probably going to be different. How can you optimize for those small screens that are in people's pockets? And then, obviously, uh, apps. You know, app stores, the phenomenon of the apps. You know, everybody's downloading lots of different things. And uh, one thing that we're quite successful, we've now had 5 million apps downloaded. So it's, not only is it a great way for people to use specific services of, of your um, platform, but it's also a great promotion tool. You know, if lots of people are downloading these apps, if it's getting featured in the Android App Store or the iTunes App Store, then that actually drives a lot of awareness around your product as well. And then onto the creation. So we really think that audio and music, it's never been easier to create uh, music and audio than before. So you know, back in the, the classic kind of, um, you know, these crazy big, if you, if you wanted to make music, you would have to have these huge devices, all this outboard gear. You'd, you'd have to invest a lot of money. Well, now all of those tools are really being compacted into these small screens. And these are just a few examples. So music creation apps, one of the, one of the really popular, if you go to the music section of uh, the iTunes store, for example, um, then you'll see a lot of these music creation apps are the most popular. It's not, it's not traditionally, um, you know, you, you have got apps that bring the traditional music make experience into your pocket, but you also have these kind of more fun, playful apps that means that anybody can be a music maker. And then one of the realizations that we had was, you know, one of the big revolutions for sites like Flickr and for YouTube was that it wasn't just about professionally produced media anymore. Everybody had a camera in their pocket or every, everybody had a video camera in that pocket. And that brought rise to this whole ecosystem of, you know, the, the different platforms sharing that media on different uh, social networks. I think one thing that, that we're really excited by is and not many people have realized, but everybody's walking around with a, a, a microphone in their pocket nowadays. So next time you're out and about, think about if you're, if you're getting out your iPhone or your Android phone and you're taking lots of photos and video, just think about all the different things that you could be doing capturing sound um, using something like the SoundCloud app. So with that, I just wanted to play this piece of audio. So this was, um, I've been set a bit of a challenge from my colleague who spoke at Campus Party Mexico. Um, and what she did is she used, it, she used the record app to, um, capture the audience, and I, I want to set a challenge. So this is what they did in Mexico. Two, three. Awesome. 
Okay, so I think that was a pretty lame effort. I think that um, the people in this room can do a much better job than that. So are we ready to say, after three, everybody needs to say Campus Party Brazil as loud as they can. So is everybody ready? Is everybody really ready? Okay. So after three, I want you all to say Campus Party Brazil. Okay, one, two, three. All right, nice one, thanks. Okay, so I'll make sure that gets uploaded after this and uh, I'll share that with everyone on the web. Um, I did record some, there was somebody in the audience, we did record some singing in the canteen the other day, but I haven't put that out there, but we, we will do that later. So, So yeah, just to kind of um, you know, bring to a close, I mean, some of the things that we've really found, if, if anybody out there is you know, trying to build their own platform or thinking about building a web product nowadays, you know, the, the four things that we really, really found were important was, first of all, content. Do something unique. Um, you know, if you have a, a piece of content, really think about how you can turn it into an object that can be shared, engaged with. Make that content social. That's really, really important. Second of all, once you've built that, once you've found out what your niche is, Think about your community. Don't force it, don't pressure it, but build the tools for your community to go and build your platform and find unique use cases. And if you're not being surprised every day by what your community is, then think again. You might, you might be doing something wrong. Um, last of all, developers. Um, you know, we're in an age where you know, everybody is learning to code. There's so many different things that you can do with all these APIs, all these tools. I think an event like this is really testament to that. So really build your platform. If you want to kind of uh, expand it exponentially, think about how you can empower other people, other developers to build services on top of your own platform. Uh, and then last of all, mobile. Uh, this is almost a given, but really, really think about you know, whatever you're doing, what is the experience like in mobile? Does it even need a website? Should I build for mobile first? You know, what are those experiences going to look like when they're in somebody's pocket? So yeah, so that's, uh, that's a wrap. I think we might have a few minutes um, just to um, take some questions. We do, we actually just hired our first Brazilian developer. So I know there's a lot of um, developers and computer science students in the room. If anybody, I kind of have to say this, if any, anybody's interested in joining what we're doing at SoundCloud, then uh, please do get in touch. And yeah, last of all, I, I'm going to try and say this. So, uh, obrigado, uh, Port Uvia. So, thanks for listening. Okay, so I think we have about six or seven minutes for questions. So, if we have a mic in, uh, does anyone have a mic to go around? My name is Christina, and I would like to know, I just spoke to the owner of one of the most important radios in Brazil, and uh, I want to know if you want to be a partner in a project called Fair Play Brazil. Do you know what it is? No, I don't. Sorry. It's a project of uh, music against corruption. Oh, okay. And uh, in November, we have uh, United Nations uh, meeting here regarding corruption. Sorry, I've got the, the interpretation, but you're speaking English anyway. So let's finish this question and then I'll... Okay. Uh, so uh, I would like to know if you want to do this, because basically what it is is that Brazilians there have a lot of creativity. Yeah. Uh, and they can start work in citizenship, not re related to parties or whatever but yeah. relating to yeah i think uh, i mean what what i would say so it's i mean we should yeah come and find me afterwards and definitely be happy to talk about it. i mean one of the, the really interesting things you know soundcloud as a platform is not just being you know we, we have a lot of different community projects happening and and people are really finding that they connect can connect to each other through music so anything that we can do that on a global scale as well anything that we can do to kind of help that um yeah we'd, we'd definitely be up for it so. okay thanks okay any other questions I'm just going to figure out how to use this thing. Hello. Hello. Oh, just. Eh, queria agradecer por ter vindo, né, mostrar esse essa ferramenta muito boa. Eu sou produtor musical aqui de São Paulo, meu nome é Carlos Yunes. Eu faço trilha sonora para cinema, vídeo e tenho um trabalho também em pop music. 
É, queria ver do autor dicas para melhorar a performance de divulgação dos nossos trabalhos. São meio segmentados, né? Seria melhor misturar tudo ou separar? E, ou o que você acha disso? Yeah, I mean, it's really, we have a lot of um, people doing film score and kind of, you know, composing and cinematic stuff on SoundCloud. I mean, the, the first thing I'd say is, um, you know, within the community, we do have a couple of really distinct communities who are engaged in, in the same field you are. And we've seen a couple of really, really great collaboration projects as well. So um, finding different users on the platform who have different skills and actually getting together and, um, you know, making completely new projects. Um, in terms of actually promoting what you're doing, um, then I would say, you know, th the best thing to do is, you know, just to get your sounds out on the web to make a show reel and then make use of all these amazing different sites like um, Facebook and Tumblr. And if you look in the app gallery, we're, we're integrated with lots of different um, sites where you can plug in all of your different videos and sounds and things like that and build a presence on the web for those things, like a kind of portfolio site. So, um, yeah, definitely dive into some of those tools, things like Flavors and Tumblr and Root Music. Um, and yeah, just kind of get your sounds out there. And I, I definitely really, really encourage if you are someone who's working with music is to actually invite other people to work with you. So, you know, put some of that work that you're doing and invite people to come and collaborate. And th when that's done right, it can be really powerful. So does that answer the question? Compreendi. Essa parte de do SoundCloud com outras mídias sociais facilita bastante também, né? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, we, we were never designed to be, you know, the one place for you on the web. We really wanted to focus on your sounds and then help you spread that to lots of places and, and share it with collaborators as well. So. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any other questions? Uh, here. Hi, Dave. My name is Adriano. Uh, I'd like to know, uh, we saw the Destroyed Project by Moby. Sorry, okay. It's the Destroyed Project. The Instagram and the new Moby album you guys did at the start of 2011. Uh, I'd like to know, being, so, uh, being music, uh, we can say the first, uh, the main reason of SoundCloud. There are a lot of musicians and things like that. I'd like to know, how do you think SoundCloud is helping the musicians go out there? Uh, if you know SoundCloud is the first reason for musicians to go out there, if we, how, do, how would I say, if SoundCloud, uh, if SoundCloud is the best platform to distribute new music, and what do you think about music on the internet nowadays? Yes, yeah, so I, I think one of the really exciting things is, um, you know, we've really seen this huge global community of people on SoundCloud. We, we see so many kind of, um, you know, unsigned but extremely talented musicians out there, and before, you could only really get heard if you, you, know, you went through one of these old gatekeepers, if you were signed to a record label or something like that. And I think the opportunity for kind of young musicians and, and people who might not already have that audience to connect with their own audience and find collaborators as well. So we, we've heard a lot of success stories of people on SoundCloud um, you know, who have just been putting up their new music and all of a sudden they get discovered by someone else. Maybe it's a collaborator, maybe it's someone in A&R or a record label. Um, one really great story was um, there was a guy called Zed um, and he had sent his music to um, a guy called Skrillex who some of you might know and he just sent him the SoundCloud link and he just happened, you know, Skrillex on that day, he just happened to be checking through all of his SoundCloud links and he discovered this guy and he was like, right, wow, this is amazing, you know, you haven't got a record deal or anything, you know, but I love your music, let's collaborate and let's go out there and release your music. So. I think that's one good thing is just, you know, keep putting your music out there and, and find other collaborators to work with who can really amplify what you're doing. Um, and then the second thing is, um, I mean, one of the things that we do on SoundCloud is we track, and this happens on a lot of other media platforms, but as soon as something goes online, then you can all of a sudden track all the different usage. So we've seen you might put a piece of music up online, but all of a sudden you realize that you're getting, you know, 90% of your plays in Europe, for example, or someone in Europe might suddenly find that they're hugely popular in Brazil and they can actually use that data and they can collect that feedback and they can actually use that to go and connect with new, uh, new markets and new people that they hadn't before. So, yeah, does that, does that answer your question? But I mean, come and find me. I'm sure I can help with any kind of specific uh, questions afterwards as well. Okay, one last question. Saber como que o SoundCloud vê o Tractor como plataforma talvez padrão para DJs. Se existe algum aplicativo já previsto por vocês de integração para 
talvez um stream ao vivo do que o DJ está tocando e a publicação do SoundCloud. E um paralelo aí de um projeto que o Rich Howard teve de tweetar as músicas em tempo real do que ele estava tocando. É, e como que isso poderia ir, como que o SoundCloud se inseria nesse contexto aí? Já que, não sei, talvez a boa parte dos DJs saíram do MySpace e foram para o SoundCloud. Yeah, I think uh, that's a really, really exciting opportunity, and we, we've really been focused, you know, with the Pro Tools integration. You can see that, you know, by bringing web services to some of those more traditional, you know, like software packages for creation, whether it's Tractor or Ableton or Pro Tools. And I think there's a couple of things. First of all, actually being able to, you know, if you've got, you know, a selection of music up there in the cloud, you know, how can you bring those uh, tracks directly into what you're doing? So if you're using something like Tractor, could you just queue up all of your tracks that are on the internet on services like SoundCloud? Um, I think other things is collaboration. Um, one thing that we did, there's a really beautiful iPad app that's made by Korg, um, which is the IMS20, which uh, if anyone knows their you know, classic gear, the MS20 is a really, really great synth. And as soon as they brought that experience to iPad, what they did is they realized that because this is on iPad, because it's mobile, because it's connected to the web, um, you know, if we integrate with SoundCloud, what we can do is we can allow people to um, not only share and collaborate, but they can actually capture the music that they've just played within that. It could be Tractor, it could be Ableton, it could be anything. And then go and instantly share that with other collaborators and get them to share it back and forth. Um, another really great example, there's um, a musician called Zoe Keating, um, who I just spent some time with the other week, and she's a cellist. But what she does is she has all this great software for looping um, the cello part. So as soon as she performs, she captures all of those sounds in Ableton um, and then she now has a workflow that as soon as the gig is finished, she can just share those, um, those looped cello parts directly onto the web and her fans can just have instant access to that and go and create. So, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, with, with software like Tractor and Ableton and all these different things, um, you know, adding this layer of mobility and, and web and allowing collaboration and creation in that is, is going to be really powerful in the next five to ten years. Okay. David. Hello. Oh, we have one more question. Yes. Just one with uh, maybe two last points together and then yep. close. Okay. Great. So one last question from the back. Portuguese, please. My name is Marcel. I am a developer web. And yesterday I met with a client who questioned me that he would like to put sound on his site. And as a practice of development, we end up not recommending a lot for the size of do, do carregamento do site. Então, é, hoje com a sua ferramenta, eu visualizei um exemplo que você demonstrou é, a interação do som com o site e vi uma possibilidade muito grande para se trabalhar com o web nisso. E eu gostaria de saber como é que funcionam esses plugins. São fáceis de aplicar em, no, nos meus desenvolvimentos? Eu tenho autorização para publicar essa, é, os seus APIs dentro da minha yeah so I mean our, our API is open for any developer to build on top of and I think what, what you're talking about is exactly the sort of use case that we would really encourage there is terms and conditions to the to the um, to the um, API so obviously you have to adhere by some of those but it's completely free there's no kind of commercial agreements or anything like that that you're needed I mean one really good example um, is a company called root music and they were building an application for bands to put their music and like everything about their band onto their Facebook page and they had exactly the same problem they didn't want to build like audio hosting into the platform because of all the different complications you know having to deal with upload flows and bandwidth issues and things like that but Root Music were able to build their service from zero to a hundred thousand users by plugging into SoundCloud so they, they effectively handed off all the audio hosting to SoundCloud and that's what that's what I really mean by like BizDev 2.0 so that was just something they just built that and we were like okay that's great there's no commercial agreements around that it's great for everybody because they all of a sudden have somebody they can plug sound into their service completely for free with minimal like um, upfront costs and then ongoing costs um, but for SoundCloud, it's really great because anybody who wants to use their service, they can actually sign up. So there's no kind of you know, money or formal agreement between the two partners, um, but we're really kind of leveraging you know, both things for the advantage. So, I mean, what I would say, there's four people, uh, SoundClouders in the front here. Um, uh, uh, Tomas, if you could raise your hand. So these guys are here, developers. You should go and speak to them, and I, th I should think we can probably get sound into your application in you know, under 60 minutes, hopefully. So.
Cool. Thank you. It's been really exciting to be here, so thanks.